And he talked about the real mindset of 75 hard and the real change that occurs is in the process of every single day at the end of the day, being able to look back on your day and being proud of what you did, being proud of what you accomplished, being proud of what you executed on, being proud that you did the things that you said you were going to do. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah, it's kind of a horse, horse, H-O-A-R, how voice is gone today. This episode 152. Thank you for joining us. And on this episode, I really want to talk to you about something that I believe is, is key to not only success, but happiness and fulfillment in your life. And I want to come at it from the context of 75 hard. A lot of you um, have followed on my journey <clears throat> as I did this 75 hard challenge last year. Uh, but for those that did not follow, uh, just a quick recap of what 75 Heart is. It was created by Andy Frisella. Um, he has the MFCO podcast and now the Real AF podcast. Um, he's the founder of First Form Supplement Company. Just an all-around incredible human being. Uh, their business does over $500 million in revenue, uh, but it's one of the realest, rawest guys on social media. He created this challenge and there are certain things that you have to accomplish every single day for 75 days straight to ultimately succeed. Some of those things are two workouts a day, minimum of 45 minutes each. One has to be outside, which adds an interesting element here in the winter. Um, you have to pick a diet. It can be any diet as restrictive or non-restrictive. It's just a diet that challenges you and you have to stick to it. Not a single deviation, not a single bite of a cheat meal, if you will, uh, for 75 days, which that's certainly difficult. You have to read 10 pages of a book. It can't be a audio book that you're listening to. It has to be a actual tangible book in your hand, 10 pages every day. And then you have to, um, take a progress pick every day. And that's basically it. It doesn't sound like much, but to do that for 75 days is insanely difficult. It's extremely intense. And the reason why it's difficult and the reason why it's intense is because you're supposed to make it that way. If you're truly following this program, you are doing workouts, you are sticking to a diet that is uncomfortable that is stretching, that is taking you beyond whether wherever you've been before, physically, mentally, emotionally. And it's really not a physical challenge. Yes, there are physical aspects to it, but it is a mental challenge. There are days throughout this challenge where you are going to feel like death. You know, working out 150 times in 75 days is no short feat. And there's wear and tear in your body that's involved with that. But there are going to be other days, and I would say many days, we're just going to feel absolutely unstoppable. And there's a transformation that takes place in your mind throughout the challenge, uh, at many different stages. And I would say everyone that goes through it probably has a different journey. But one congruent theme is that there are these defining moments throughout the challenge where there's this mindset flip or switch. And for me, there were many of those. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is, is really why I'm now doing that 75 hard challenge again. And whether you are interested in doing that challenge, I have no tie to the challenge. I'm not promoting the challenge. I think it's a great thing, but whether you're doing that or not, how you can really take a look at your life and implement some of the elements of this challenge and really implement the mindset behind this type of structure to ultimately make 2020 the best year of your life, 
to get you, if not there, on the road towards fulfillment and happiness and success. And so what I realized going through that challenge, I mean, for me, there were times in this challenge really throughout it that I just felt like there was nothing that I couldn't accomplish. When you start putting these, these daily tasks in place and you're really going all in, like giving it your absolute 100% effort at the end of the day, you look back and you're like, man, I accomplished so much today. And it's interesting how in a structure where you're adding more to your plate, how you'll end up getting more stuff done outside of what you're normally doing and outside of what you're adding to it. And a lot of that comes from this realization that there's so much wasted time throughout the day that there's so much time where you're scrolling through social media or you're watching TV or you're you know, having just random conversations that aren't really amounting any, to anything. All this time where you looked at your life as being busy but weren't really accomplishing much. It got to the point for me where I almost started to disgust, like it, it created this like disgust or, or maybe even disrespect for time wasting and for excuses. You start realizing the excuses that you would use for not going to the gym, the excuses that you would use for maybe deviating from your diet, the excuses that you would use for not reading those 10 pages because you're tired and you want to go to sleep are the same excuses that you're using in every other area of your life. And when you start realizing that in yourself, you start really seeing it in other people, which is an interesting dynamic in and of itself. You start seeing the excuses that other people are placing on why they don't have time and why they can't do things and why that doesn't work for them. And in that process, you just become a better version of yourself. But 75 hard, it's 75 days and that 75 days ended for me. And over the, the weeks after 75 hard, it was, it's almost hard to describe, but it's like, I felt lost. You know, I'd been in this rigid structure for 75 days. And then when I finished, you know, in my mind, I was like, well, I'll just, you know, do some type of modified version of that, or, or I'll continue on a similar path, but I didn't put certain structures in place. I didn't set those certain things that I would do each day. And so ultimately I went back to where I was before the challenge. Now my body didn't go all the way back to where I was. My mind didn't go all the way back to where I was, but I stopped doing those things that I was doing in the challenge. And so I started, or so I stopped seeing that change and seeing that mindset displayed every day. And honestly, like I felt like almost depressed. Like I started digging this hole of like, well, you know, I was working out twice a day and I only worked out twice this week. And you just dig this hole of like, man, I'm right back to the way I was. And, you know, I, I deviated from my diet a little bit. And so, well, I've already blown my diet, so I might as well eat whatever I want tonight. I've already eaten bad this morning. And, you know, that triggers into, well, I'll start eating better tomorrow or I'll start eating better on Monday, right? Diet starts Monday. And quite frankly, I've lost control. I lost control over a couple of weeks. But I think more importantly, that happiness and that fulfillment, it left when the challenge ended. And so if we think about that, why, why would that be? And Andy Frisella did a, an incredible video a few weeks ago, and I don't know how to reference it specifically, so you can go find it, but it's on his Instagram uh, page. And he talked about the real mindset of 75 hard and the real change that occurs is in the process of every single day at the end of the day, being able to look back on your day and being proud of what you did, being proud of what you accomplished, being proud of what you executed on. 
being proud that you did the things that you said you were going to do. And I think in that is the very answer to happiness and fulfillment and success is being able to look at each and every one of your days. And when you lay down at night to go to sleep, feeling that sense of pride and knowing that you did everything you could that day. And it was tangible. I got those two workouts in that second workout that I did not want to do. I did it anyways. And now I am proud of myself for doing something that was difficult. I'm proud of myself for doing something that was uncomfortable. And when that goes away, what are you left with? Well, for me, I was left with the feelings of crap thinking about all the stuff that I didn't do that day. So when I'm going to bed at night, I'm thinking like, man, I didn't get much accomplished today. I didn't work out today. I didn't stick to my diet today. And that is a negative downward spiral that can take you off your game in all the other areas of your life. And so if we take 75 hard out of the equation, we take this challenge and all the different elements out of the equation. And this is a sales podcast. If we look at how can we create structure in our life, how can we create goals that are not just performance based? And we've talked about this before, but activity based goals, number of phone calls, number of businesses you walk in, number of cold calls, number of doors you're knocking on, number of appointments you're, you're setting or number of appointments completed. How can we create a structure in our life to not only at the end of the day be able to say we accomplished this and be proud of that, but if we break it down to the simplicity of being able to look back on your day and know what it is even that you were trying to accomplish. So there's a lot of people out there, and maybe you that's listening to this, that will look back on a day and they'll say, man, I was so busy today. Were you busy doing things that were strategically put in place to get you to where you ultimately want to be? It's a big difference between busy and getting things accomplished. There's a big thing, difference between being busy and being effective, busy and being efficient. My dad used to always uh, tell me that a, a washing machine is busy, but it's not getting a whole lot done like being on a treadmill, like you're not get, you're not going anywhere. You're just spinning in circles. That's where a lot of that time wasting comes in. And so if we can create structures in place to where we know Monday, boom, I do my phone calls. How many do I do? I've got a goal. How many do am I going to do on Monday? And at the end of the day, being able to look back and say, okay, today was Monday. My goal for Monday is to do this many calls. I either did or I didn't. And by doing what you said you were going to do, being able to look back on Monday as a success, like I'm proud of myself. I was, said I would make 100 phone calls and I made 110 phone calls. Today was a great day. It was a successful day. Whether those 110 phone calls led to you know, massive uh, prospects in your pipeline, massive sales that are going to be coming in the near future, I would say it doesn't matter. We all know it matters, but it doesn't matter in the scheme of those activity based goals, because you know, based on your business, the things that you have to do to ultimately get you to where to where you want to be. And at the end of the day, it's all a numbers game. So if you did those things, which will ultimately get you to where you want to go, then by doing those things, that was a successful day. So we have to figure out what are those things. And we have to start putting structure in place to where we know whether or not we did them and not just did them, but we know if we did them well or not. And we know if we stretched ourselves, if the goal is this many of this, did you do that many or more of that? That's something that you can be proud of. No different than I was super proud of myself for doing you know, 45 minutes of cardio outside at 11 p.m. at night when it was 30 degrees outside and windy. There's no difference between the feeling of pride and accomplishment in that than there is in saying that I was going to do 100 phone calls and doing 110. They're both uncomfortable. They both took hard work. They both may have been outside what I normally do. 
And so I can feel this sense of pride and accomplishment. And that is where happiness and fulfillment and success will ultimately come from. And so my question for you today is, number one, do you have a structure like that in place for you? That's constantly stretching you. That's constantly pushing you. And that is measurable so that at the end of each day, you can look back and know, did you accomplish it or not? Did you do what you said, said you were going to do, or did you not do it? And then once we put those things in place, can we start looking at each of those days as wins and losses? And at the end of the week, if we have more wins and losses in days, then we won the week. If at the end of the month, we have more wins and losses in weeks, then we won the month. And ultimately that's how you will win the year. That's how you will win 2020, but it doesn't happen all at once. It happens in the hundred phone calls on Monday that I said I needed to do. And I did, and I was proud of myself for doing so. So I won the day. If you start framing your life around structure, which creates discipline, discipline creates freedom. And that freedom is what ultimately gives you that happiness and fulfillment that we all want. So I challenge you guys to look at your life and just figure out, is the structure there? If it's not, put it in place and then really start tracking it each day. Start asking yourself at the end of the night, am I proud of the work that I did today? Am I proud of the things that I accomplished today? Am I proud of the effort that I put into today? Are there going to be days where you're not? Of course. But if there's more days that you are than you aren't, you win. But unless you have a way to measure that, unless you have a structure in place to create the opportunity to measure that, then you're just blindly walking through life hoping for the best, expecting the worst, and letting life happen to you, not attacking life one day at a time. So with that, guys, this is episode 152 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah-hoo!